as Martin mentioned, I am uh, Chris McDermott, the Managing Director of Cambridge Weight Plan. And today I'm going to talk to you about the following. Star Trek, the original series from the 1960s and the Next Generation series from the 1980s. Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin and William Ernest Hendley. And how I think these rather eclectic references link up best to describe our employer ownership journey so far. Firstly, I think it's important to say that this is a journey that no one else has been on and I suppose could ever go on because employee ownership is so unique to each individual business. However, I, I hope there are some things that you'll recognize, some of your experiences you'll understand and perhaps some of our views that will be of a challenge to you. Okay, so what is Cambridge Weight Plan? Well, we are a diet food manufacturing company based in Corby in Northamptonshire. We employ 226 staff on a 130,000 square foot estate and we are now 100% employee owned through a trust. We make very low calorie diet shakes, soups, bars and meal packs and we sell them across the UK through a, we've had a, a surge of consultants now, so we've got 4,500 strong sales force, uh, people that we call consultants. We used to be called, some years ago, the Cambridge Diet, and our turnover last year was 45 million pounds. We're also a direct sales business in the same ilk as Avon or Herbalife. Uh, we export, so around the world, we sell our products through a distributor network into 40 countries, around 40 countries, from Nigeria to Norway and the Netherlands to New Zealand. And all of that, is as far away as you can probably get from Starfleet, the Federation, and the Klingon Empire. <laughs> and yet Star Trek, and particularly Captain James T. Kirk, as played by William Shatner, a uh, handsome devil that he is, is a great place for me to start our employee ownership journey. Why is that? I hear you not say. <laughs> well, James T. Kirk was a trailblazer, a maverick, a shoot from the hip, fire first, ask questions later, whilst kissing the scantily clad love interest kind of guy. <laughs> there you go, I got there in the end. He had a big, big personality that permeated its way through not just the USS Enterprise or even Starfleet, but right across the entire galaxy where no one has gone before. I think that type of person will resonate with a lot of employee-owned businesses here today. In fact, I think there might be some Captain Kirks in this very audience. Trailblazers who started out with, with nothing, risked everything, and in doing so, built something special something unique that has a spirit and ethos that they want to protect. These are great leaders. They are visionaries whose personalities permeate their way throughout their entire businesses. I salute them. <laughs> and believe that one of the reasons they are drawn to employ ownership in the first place is because they want their, their cultural legacy, their, their cultural inheritance to those that come after them to be retained and nurtured through employee ownership. That was certainly the case with our owner directors. However, and it's taken me quite a while to come to terms with this, I am not Captain Kirk, as much as I would like to think I am. I don't have Kirk's shoot from the hip style and devil may care attitude, and I can't send some red shirt down to the surface to be vaporized. I think this sums up expendability in the shortest amount of words possible. Kirk, Spock and McCoy and Ensign Ricky are beaming down to the planet. Guess who's not coming back? <laughs> no, I can't be Captain Kirk because I represent the next generation. Yes, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, although I don't look it, I am in fact Jean-Luc Picard. Make it so. I represent those who come after the visionaries, after the mavericks. I represent those who didn't build everything from scratch, fighting and defeating countless enemies in an us against the world kind of way. For Jean-Luc, it's not conquest that drives him, but discovery, compromise, negotiation. He even has a Klingon on his crew. It's civilization that matters where no one 
has gone before. I wonder how many of you here today represent the next generation? Well, I don't know about you, but my Captain Kirk was a hard act to follow. I've been with Cambridge Way Plan now for 15 years, and when I took over as managing director at the beginning of 2015, I felt I was starting from scratch. I was moving into the undiscovered country. I understand why, but looking back, I could see that not a lot of time had been spent thinking about the next generation when our company moved into full employee ownership. As was done in two stages, 49% sold to the business in 2009 and the rest at the end of 2014, both financed by substantial company loans. Much time was spent creating the correct financial structures and the structures around facilitating the loan, rather than thinking about the practical structures, particularly when it came to interactions between the company the board and the trust. Now don't get me wrong, there was a great commercial structure in place, but in terms of how the commercial world interacted with the trust and how it related to employee ownership, well we were, for us, we were really breaking new ground. So when I assumed the seat on the bridge, I only had a vague set of principles to work from, although what I did have was all three of the former owners in positions of some responsibility within the company. The owner MD that I took over from and whom had originally recruited me into the business and had been my mentor for many, many years, became chair of the board that linked the business to the trust and the other two former owners became trustees. And all three were happy for this state of affairs to continue indefinitely. At the time, I didn't really have any problem with that. But now, here in hindsight, this setup was a mistake. Jean-Luc could never succeed with Captain Kirk still on the bridge, no matter how much Kirk might have promised not to interfere. The business was successful and very profitable, but its relationship with the trust and the holding company's board was loose and undefined. We had the freedom to act as long as we operated within certain, rather vague parameters. In this circumstance, I suppose it was inevitable that at some point we would come into conflict with the former owners. One piece of advice I was given when I became MD from one of the owners was, don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, then I laughed and said, no, 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 it's fine, don't worry. But actually, that really struck a chord, actually quite deep in my psyche, because the next generation were now carrying 30 odd years of history on our backs, as well as the blood and the sweat and the tears that the owners had invested over many years of struggle. But we had to manage and build something very different from Kirk, Scotty and Spock. We had to engage and connect with our employees in a way that hadn't been done before. Although we were directors of the business, we had to behave and speak to employees differently because on an ownership level, we were now all equal. In 2015, one of the big challenges was explaining that employees now owned the business outright. This was difficult for two reasons. Firstly, the three former owners were still periodically around and in positions of some authority. And secondly, we had a £20 million loan to pay off. And that meant our ability to demonstrate ownership through the use of money and value was, was, was very limited. For many, this meant that it felt like we were an employer-owned business in name only, that the same group of people as before still ran the business, perhaps pulling the strings from behind the scenes. But this was a next generation problem that could only be solved by the next generation. So what we did was, was we asked everyone in the company what they thought, what they thought employee ownership was, and what they also thought it wasn't and we listened very, very carefully to their answers. We also went out into the EO galaxy to meet and to listen to those who had gone before us or were battling with the same issues. They were, and still are, a many and varied group. I got a photo from the uh, East Midlands meeting last week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where Tyrone is there, he's somewhere there. Um, and what we, heard, what we heard changed our views forever. 
We discovered that we needed to make our version of employee ownership real, make it tangible, something that could, people could actually touch and see. We needed to create communication channels that allowed dialogue up and down the line of power. We also needed to say what the business stood for, what its values were, and we needed to explain our financial journey and when at some point we might become debt free. So we did all of these things. Our employees became our stakeholders, issued with a certificate outlining their rights and responsibilities. We created voice groups, which gave every stakeholder an opportunity to express their thoughts on the business. And out of these groups, we created our core values. The first time we had articulated the culture of the business created and nurtured by the former owners. And I did a presentation to everyone in the company explaining our financial journey and when we could hope to experience what we ended up calling Financial Freedom Day. The moment when we finally paid off the second bank loan used to purchase the business, the moment we felt we would become truly employee-owned, truly free. I mentioned earlier that the conflict about the conflict that arose, and that brings me nicely to Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin, there they are, an A-list mega couple, if ever there was one. So she, Gwyneth, is Hollywood royalty, and he's the lead singer of uh, a small band called Coldplay. Married in 2003, they appear to be the perfect couple, but alas, in 2014, they revealed that they were separating. Their press statement announcing the news was entitled, Conscious Uncoupling. And that, that phrase became as much a part of their story as the marriage breakdown itself. It is pure PR. And as someone who started as Cambridge Weight Plan, Plan's only PR executive 15 years ago, I absolutely loved it. It was so of the moment. And yet, it's a phrase that I've used a lot to describe the experiences that we've had when we became 100% employee owned at the start of 2015, especially with regards to the former owners. Here's a challenge to those in the audience today considering employee ownership. Once you've taken the leap, which I would strongly suggest that you do, there will come a time when you have to face the moment where you will have to leave the business. Now hopefully this will be voluntarily, but it could also come through a process that may not be entirely in your control. When that moment comes, will you be able to walk away? To let the next generation, whoever they might be, or whatever you might think of them, get on with it? Will you be able to consciously uncouple yourself from the business that you have sweated blood and tears to create? If you have any, any hesitations, then I would strongly recommend, early on in the process, drawing up a clear, sensible, transparent, but time-specific exit plan. That way, when the moment comes, and it will, you can own it and be in control of it and not let the process be dictated by others. Unfortunately, that was not our experience. Because the EO framework and the infrastructure built for our next generation was insubstantial, and because there was no specific end dates for when people would finally leave the business, and by that I mean completely retire, serious conflict occurred. This led to a period of turmoil in 2016 when some relationships, some very personal relationships, were ruined, probably, I think, probably forever. Just as I wish that our former owners had recognized this was going to be an issue before they sold the business, I also wish that I had recognized it was going to be such a challenge when I took over. Because just as our former owners should have uncoupled themselves from Cambridge Weight Plan earlier, for our company to really thrive, to really try and fulfill its own potential, we needed to consciously uncouple ourselves from them. We needed to do it with respect, and dignity, but we needed to do it. Their ties to the business were both commercially real and deeply emotional, and were both conscious and unconscious. I was John Luke Picard making next generation's decisions, but consciously and subconsciously, I was tempering my actions based on what I thought Captain Kirk might think, say, or feel. 
This is no better demonstrated than by recent events. Our sector, the dieting sector, is incredibly competitive. As you can imagine, there are new diets coming out all the time. And we recognised in late 2016 that we were beginning to lose market share. So we decided to undertake a comprehensive brand, brand review. Nothing particularly controversial in that. However, the recommendations that were presented to us by our branding agency were nothing short of revolutionary. And as a result, we are now in the throes of completely rebranding the business. Last Friday, at our biggest ever annual convention, we launched our new brand to about 1,800 of our UK consultants and invited all of our stakeholders to the conference so that they could experience the business and they could experience the rebrand. So on Friday, we went from this Cambridge weight plan to this. The one-to-one -one diet. Now, this is big, bold stuff for us and begins to move the brand away from Cambridge Weight Plan towards something entirely new, the one-to-one -one diet. I'm going to leave that up all day, by the way, so just a little sit settling for everybody. Just look for the free phone number. Um, uh, so the one-to-one -one diet consciously uncoupling the business from some of its 35-year heritage. I deeply suspect that if some of our former owners had still been directly involved in the business, we probably wouldn't have done this. Not necessarily because they might not have liked the idea, but because 15 years worth of conscious and unconscious coupling could have influenced our decision-making process long before any of this got in front of them. Part of me likes to think that it wouldn't have made any difference. We would have gone on with this bold and brave move, and we would have, and even if the former owners had hated it. But deep down, I know that that's not true. The strands that bonded me to them, and the company's history to their history, and their personalities, was very strong and very powerful. I only recognise that many of these ties were invisible once they were cut. For us, that cut was traumatic, but in hindsight, it was exactly what we needed to do so that we could create and own the future that we now face, respecting our history and those who've contributed to it, but looking forward rather than backwards. Which brings me nicely to this chap, William Ernest Henley. Okay, so who is he and what's he got to do with this story? Well, he has two claims to fame. One, thanks to the marvels of Wikipedia, is that his daughter was the inspiration for Wendy in Peter Pan, and the other is that he wrote the poem called Invictus. During his time on Robin Island, Nelson Mandela said that this particular work gave him much inspiration and solace. Invictus is Latin for unconquered, and I think the final stanza of the poem sums up where we see our employee ownership journey taking us. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. We celebrated Financial Freedom Day on Employee Ownership Day this year. We paid off our loan that we took out in 2015 to buy the business two years early, such has been our recent success. So on that day, we took the very first sachet made that morning and put it in put it in the display case along with the following words. This was the first sachet produced on the 29th of June 2018, the day we became financially free. This now sits in our reception as a proud and very real reminder of our coming of age. We also gave everyone in the company a surprise £1,500 payment to mark the moment. They were very excited about it. Again, trying to make it as real as possible. And there's nothing more real for people than money in the bank. Again, we wouldn't have done this if some of our former owners had still been involved. We wouldn't have dared because of how it could have been perceived. But we truly believe in capitalism and employee ownership. Like Mark Constantine from Lush said last year, we are bees, not locusts. But even after nearly eight years of talking about it, only in the last year or so has it felt like our employee ownership journey has really begun. And that's just as well, because in the past six months, due to us starring on BBC One's big crash diet experiment, 
We've seen a 25% rise in UK sales, as well as record numbers of people wanting to become consultants. We were a £45 million business last year. We'll be a £50 million business this year. This is putting a huge amount of pressure on, on everyone within the company. In fact, yesterday, whilst we were here enjoying this conference, our stakeholders back in Corby were dealing with the single largest day of orders in the company's history. In the past, this would have been something like, oh, so what, I'll just, I'll just work and I'll just do and you just pay me. But now, it's more products being made, more consultants joining the business, a new brand, record sales, being broken monthly, and you're telling me that I own part of this? Bring it on. We still have lots to do, and we have many failings, and much to learn. But I would like to sum up our experience of employee ownership so far like this. To allow the next generation to boldly go where no one has gone before, to be masters of their fate and captains of their ships, I urge those that came before them to let it go. Actively plan for the moment, build it into your strategy early on, set a date, stick to it, and then let it go. Consciously uncouple from the business financially, consciously uncouple physically, and most importantly of all, consciously uncouple emotionally. I know that that is difficult, but in doing so, I believe that you'll leave the very best legacy possible. A business that's proud of where it's come from, but has the freedom to concentrate its energies on facing its own future. For good or bad, let the next generation captain their ships so that they and their crew can truly fulfill their potential, and in doing so, can truly honor the legacy that was bestowed upon them. Thank you.